So I've been on a lifelong lesson to replace this Sony ZV-1 with a similar but way better quality compact camera. And one of my dreams was the Sony ZV-E1, which I ended up getting. And I ordered one of the compact lens, a 24 millimeter f2.8 Sony G lens, which has physical buttons and that physical aperture dial and autofocus manual switch, which I'm very excited because it's gonna add all more buttons to my package. I think it's a very good combination of a lens and camera. Now. I love my Tamron to 20 to 40 f 2.8. It's a great zoom lens, super compact, and it replaced my Sigma 24 to 70 uh, art lens, which was it weighed a ton and it was so massive I never wanted to carry out. But the Tamron 20 to 40 is still too big for my for my needs, and I need something smaller. So I had this dream idea, this dream setup where I get a Sony ZV E1, which has clear optical zoom, which goes in 1.5, and then I get the 24 millimeter. Uh, f2.8 and I combine the two into this super compact lightweight camera setup where I still get a 35 millimeter focal equivalent with the 1.5x zoom and with the clear image zoom not sacrifice any features like eye autofocus and all that stuff because when you zoom in you lose your autofocus and all that stuff on older cameras even on the fx30 and fx3 so did it all work out are you able to replace your uh, zoom lens with a fixed prime lens well let's find out in this video so after writing these tests side by side and looking them at great detail, as you can see here, I do a one to one X and two X zoom on my face. And I'm sorry for all the close ups of my face. I do notice that the optical zoom is obviously better. There's more detail. The colors look a little bit better. And I'm not sure if it has to do with my white balance between shots, but I mean, it was a fairly consecutive shot. I just zoomed in the lens and compared the optical and digital zoom, but overall it does look okay in terms of the detail, it doesn't look that washed out and I'm impressed by the technology. However, I don't think it's a s actual replacement to um, like having a 24 and 35 millimeter if you really care about the detail and maintain maintaining that depth of field. As you can see, you can see at 35 millimeters, the background is a little bit blurrier. So yeah, it really depends on your use cases and I think it's a little bit unfortunate because I would have loved this idea of pairing the, a really small compact 24 Sony G f 2.8 lens and then still having the capabilities of zooming in. Let's say I'm doing product B-roll shots and I want to zoom in a shot because maybe my tripod, my overhead tripod is a little bit too far and still not sacrifice that quality. Now, I wonder what it would compare with a digital zoom. In fact, let's compare that next. Let's take a clear image zoom versus a digital zoom. So in post-production, I'll zoom in 1.5x. So if I were to be perfectly honest, I'm having a hard time seeing the image quality differences between clear image zoom and a just a regular post-production digital zoom. Maybe there is a slight edge to the clear image zoom, but I don't know. Can you please leave a comment if you do see a noticeable difference between the two? Because I'm starting to doubt whether this clear image zoom technology is actually, you know, just marketing or does something special. Another thing that makes me really sad about the digital zoom, like, yeah, it does work uh, quite unfettered. However, if you really like to benefit from the focus map, which I really do because peaking is sometimes very hard to see. And let's say I'm filming, I'm doing video tutorials of let's say a phone or a smartwatch, and I want to be able to see what is in focus but without, I don't know. I just find this focus map really useful. However, as soon as you zoom in, it goes away and you can't use it. But thankfully you can use peaking. So peaking is still enabled. So that can help you with your focus if you do use the digital clear image zoom. So in conclusion, I have to say, I don't think it's possible to replace a zoom lens just yet. I do think that it's great that the Sony ZV-E1 does not restrict a lot of features when you do use the clear optical zoom. However, I do find obviously with the optical zoom, it's gonna look nicer and better, maybe better colors and all that stuff. So the dream is still, it's still, still unfortunate because I find that the zoom lenses that are at the F2.8 range for full frame are still way too big. And sure, I can get one of those smaller zoom lenses that started F4 or even the, the kit lens, but I don't know, some of the, the kit lens has a terrible minimum focus distance. So if I wanna do close-ups of objects, it, it, it's just awful. I couldn't deal with that one. I had it for the Sony a7C. So yeah, I, I returned that kit lens. So yeah, let me know in the comment section if you have a good suggestion where there is some magical zoom lens that is less than 200 grams and still has really good uh, depth of field and good quality and minimum focus distance. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.